African women are some of the most industrious yet misrepresented women on the planet. This is how editor-in-chief of Feminine Style magazine is changing the narrative of African women around the world and on the continent. Hi everyone. My name is Hetty Mercer and I am the founder and CEO of Feminine Style Africa, a digital magazine for African women by African women. I was born and raised in Ghana. I left Ghana just before my 21st birthday. So I think my, I guess my, my connection to Ghana is that I am a Ghanaian that lives abroad. I try to go back home as often as I can, but I haven't been for like a year because of COVID. Um, we move, we move. I'm getting emotional already. <laughs> I have been an activist for quite some time and I realized that um, all through my activism it, it, the one thing that was always jumping out at me was literally like the lack of female voices in media it's almost to the point of erasure um, I personally believe that media shapes public perception and um, so um, if the, the media space is continually saturated with no voices. It creates an impression that women's experiences, contributions, etc. are not as important as men's. I mean, as far back as I can remember, when I was a kid, one of my favorite programs to watch was Talking Point, which was a political program um, that used to come on just before Akan Drama on Sunday evenings in Ghana. And um, I remember that I, I really loved watching this program like you know some of the topics were went straight over my head of course um I was, I was a child um and you know sometimes I, my brothers would be there watching and they would be getting into these debates and you know I used to like think oh my god I want to be like that but I hardly ever saw women on talking points I, I to be honest I don't actually remember seeing women on talking points um and so then even even as a child at, at that point it made me feel that i when i become an older woman that space was not for me like it was reserved for men so imagine the number of children like millions of children across the continent who are watching programs like this who are watching tv where the newscasters are usually men when people discussing sports are men when you know people discussing politics issues of national interest all of these those people are men right it's obviously going to create the impression that women's voices are not important women's women's opinions do not matter you know and we see it we see it. we grow up with this this idea that women should be seen and not heard I decided that I wanted to create a space where we could bring African women together and and basically like bring our own table and our seats to the place where they were refusing us a seat at the table. So Feminine South Africa really exists to make sure that women's voices across the continent, women's contributions are not being overlooked. Right? We're saying that look, we are here, we our contributions are just as important. And if you're not going to give us the space, we are going to create the space for ourselves. Feminists are seen as these demonic cults of women who are, you know, prostitutes. I'm, I'm, I don't believe in that word prostitute, I'm just using it for effect. Prostitutes who are also sex starved and lesbians who are cultish, nobody loves them, people with daddy issues and all of that. I mean, the state of feminism on the continent is, is, is such that, you know, we the demonization of, of, of the movement is, is so ingrained in us that it's like a constant uphill battle. You know, getting women into, into spaces requires that feminists are relentless. But there's so much pushback. It's in some places it's even dangerous to be a feminist. I know feminists who have been doxxed, so people um put post their personal details online for other people to harass them, and that is very dangerous. Um, 
um, what it has told me about about being an entrepreneur is that um, there's no such thing as being your own boss makes things easy. It's not being your own boss means that you have to wake up at 3 a.m. and answer questions from your social media team because they're based in a different time zone um, to you. It means that you know you have to put the the feelings um, of others above yours. Um, it means that you have to you are responsible for people right you are responsible for people and you have to recognize that and you have to recognize value when when it's there right in front of you it shouldn't take you too long to recognize value it's also told me more importantly that having difficult conversations is not something that we can overlook it's it's one of those things that you need to nail from the start otherwise it caused problems <laughs> um but you I've, I've learned some of these lessons the hard way but you know we move <laughs> um well our limitations is that we have to recognize that we cannot do everything and we can't be everything for everyone we're very idealistic and altruistic in our approach we want to go into the spaces where people tend to neglect, right? Um, Femme South Africa is a digital magazine. We want to move from digital to print because 70% of people on the continent are not on the internet, right? This is a Googleable fact, Google it. So um, the audience that we want to reach like 30%, so the majority of them are not online. So we are limited in the, in the in the impacts that we want to make at this point because we can't reach the people that we really need to reach like data even people that can get on the internet data is a middle class issue in most parts of the continent you know in ghana like when i went from in ghana i spent so much money on data um and it, it doesn't cost anywhere near what I, I pay for data um in the uk so data is very expensive and we want to reach more people um and so and we realized that um, we cannot reach the people that we want to reach at this point. So that is definitely a limitation. And in terms of challenges, oh, there's so much competition out there. Uh, <laughs> um, we, we, we are facing this challenge of finding our niche. We know the, the market that we want to get in. There's no mistake about that. We, Feminist South Africa is not a feminist um blog or academic um blog it's also not a fashion market a magazine Family South Africa is trying to be both so we want to we want to bring the true aspects together because you know all of these issues that we have um from leisure to academia these there these are all feminist issues so we want to talk about fashion but in a feminist way we want to talk about getting your nails done in a feminist way we want to talk about the importance of having your eyelashes done if that is what you like and all of those things right we want to talk about women taking time for themselves and and you know um and self-love and creating a sisterhood and creating safe spaces uh, we want to be as inclusive as as possible you know we understand ableism you know um caste systems classism and all of these other nuances within the feminist space so we want to go into all of those spaces and um bring it together to make one um magazine where you can come to for the feminist theories that you're looking for as well as you know information on where you can go eat the best um kebab or suya you know <laughs> so um, we find that um the, the main challenges that we face at the moment is really trying to get um those two to marry because it's either the the writers are too academic in their approach or too laid back in their approach and we want to contextualize as much as possible we we are moving away from the africa is a country narrative right our writers are from six different countries so far we're hoping to expand that um so getting the the context of that particular locality to come through is can prove to be a challenge but we we find ways to work around that um but i think that for me our biggest 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 challenge at the moment is money um because we have 
a strategy that we need to deliver. We can't deliver that strategy on the um, finances that we have at the moment. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's important that we, we get some, some you know, cash injection into the organization so that we can make the impact that we, we want to make. We want to get to a place where um, we have um, moved from digital to print magazine. Um, our magazine is going to be free even when it gets to print so that we can make as much as, as much impact as possible. We aim to be a catalyst for change in the fight for gender equality. We, we, want, we, want, we want to get into people's living rooms on their TVs, in their radios, on their podcasts. We want women's voices to be at the forefront. We want people to understand that women are here, our contributions matter, our voices matter, and we will be heard.